Hello, okay. hello. Hey. Uh, BK, do you wanna do you wanna start? It is your hack after all. Uh, you mean do the countdown? Oh yeah, and uh, explain the route because we were doing any percent, but an incentive has been met to do the hundred percent. So we're gonna be switching it up a little bit. Sure. Um, so uh, there are two ways to get credits in this hack. One is by going right on the overworld. Uh, the other one is by going left on the overworld. Uh, left is post game. Um, right is the main game. Um, but you can also access post game by going to the right and looping around in a circle. Uh, in the interest of not wasting a few minutes on credits, which is the way you unlock post game by going right, uh, what Mr. Mighty Mouse is going to do is get to the the credits level, but not play it. Um, go left, pl play post game um, because we met that incentive, and then finish up the the final main game level to give us credits. So you will see the whole game, but it's uh, out of order for um, any of the speedruns. Uh, and with that, uh, let me count you down. Uh, it'll be three, two, one, go, and we'll start on go. All right. So three, two, one, go. So this is a, a flying chuck gate to uh, start out the hack in the uh, intro screen. And I should mention that this game is uh, one of the three entries in the Yellow Yasi Chan trilogy. Uh, the other two being 100 Rooms of Kuso, where you make Yellow Yasi Chan proud, and Volpe's Friend, where you rescue Yellow Yasi Chan. I remember when. Uh... Mr. Mighty Mouse uh, asked me to commentate for this. I, I went and watched the run finally. Um, I had seen the hack, but I don't watch too many of them if I think that one day I may play it. I mean, granted, now that I've seen it, I know that'll never happen. But um, I, I think it's really amazing how much really weird cape tech that even I wasn't aware of, and I consider myself to be pretty knowledgeable about cape stuff in this game. Yeah, it really is an underexplored uh, mechanic in the game. Um, to date, you know, Super Mario World ROM hacking is 20 years old, um, and there have only been six cape hacks released, this being the most recent one. This is very unfortunate. I've died to just classic SMW jank three times. Oh, yes. Yeah, so so this level, um, 8th Slope Muncher, uh, I made back in 2018 uh, before I really, like, had... A solid direction with this hack um, and it's just like a stupid dumb meme level that like throws a bunch of kaizo tropes at you like slope launchers were very popular in the day um, and you've got you know lava dolphins which are obligatory um, and like slopes killing you because you got a bad sub pixel stuff like that um, so that's the first level the game sort of becomes um, less of an exercise and frustration after this <laughs> The, uh, that's the effort barrier right there. If you're willing to beat that level, then you might have a chance for the rest of the act. <laughs> um, this level is all Yoshi-based flying stuff. Yeah, so it's Yoshi-themed. Um, so over here, uh, it's a very short room. You basically have to feed baby Yoshi uh, and grow him, and then use him to do... Uh, Crimes. An assisted Yoshi shell jump, basically. Crimes. <laughs> uh, and that uses a, a nice vanilla glitch there, which is if you um, stack those timed lifts on top of one another, Mario will sort of slide to the right of them, um, and you'll be able to run left without actually making much progress in the leftward direction. So it's useful for uh, taking off within the space of uh, two tiles. Didn't still from Morsel. Hey, can I jump in here for a few donations? Sure. Uh, we have $191 from N Street that says, BK's Let's Give Up is my favorite SMW ROM hack, and Mr. Mighty Mouse is one of the best folks in the Kaizo community. Thanks for putting this on for a great cause. And we also oh have goodness. $50 dollars from Mass Punishment that just says... 
Kate. Thank you for the kind words and the donations. Can we get some cape in chat? So fun fact about each of these levels, they all end in a boss rush. Where you fight multiple boo bosses. Yeah, so um, this draws much inspiration from Volpe's Friend, which is the first cape hack by Pogio back in 2015. Um, and as it turns out, there is just so many things you can do with a cape and a big boo. Um, and so, fun fact, uh, this hack has 42 playable rooms, um, of which exactly half, 21, are boo bosses. <laughs> <laughs> Shoutouts to uh, West Slasher for the multi-phase big boo boss ASM here. So over here we have a, a thwomp boss harassing you while you um you have to get some shells with the stomp property that the yellow shell gives Yoshi and then throw the yellow shell at the big boo then throw the other shells and and then you beat the level. Feels like after twenty one rooms of boo bosses you'd really run out of idea. I guess after twenty one maybe you did, but you know the fact that you made it to twenty one at all is really impressive. Thanks. Um, no, I've got more. They'll show up in the sequel. <laughs> this is the level that when everybody, that when BK told people his idea for the level, they gasped. It's the Cape Sky Tree. Yeah, so as, as many of you here may know, um, Sky Tree is something popularized by Kaizo 3 back in 2012. Um, arguably, it makes an earlier appearance in um, Auth... Uh, content warning um, in Hyper 6 in World 8. But the Kaizo 3 true, format... That a good, that's a good Sky Tree, though, probably. <laughs> probably. Have you have you lost the ability to judge between good and bad levels I, after playing that I hack? Have been, I have been irony poisoned at this point. I cannot <laughs> accurately discern between good and bad. That's true. Your, your Twitter bio also says as much. Uh, but yeah, in in the eight years since the Kaizo 3 Sky Tree, um, to the best of my knowledge, nobody has made a cape take on it, so I thought I would give it a shot. Um, and as it turns out, this is uh, one of people's favorite levels who play this. So you have to um, basically make sure this vine reaches the top of the level, uh, because it eats a, uh, a block that you would not otherwise be able to pass through, so that you can make it to the next room. Speaking of Hyper 6 Auth, the last time we shared a stream together was uh, for the the Hyper 6 Relay back in April. Good content. Only six months ago. It seems like a bit longer, doesn't it? <laughs> there's like a there's like a clear delimiter in my life of pre and post <laughs> Hyper 6. Time no longer has meaning, but I do remember what things were like before Hyper 6 and what things were like after Hyper 6. Um, so this makes use of the pee balloon a little bit, uh, but not too much. Like you have it to uh, to do an obstacle maybe, and then there's some custom blocks which uh, take you out of pee balloon state and put you back into flight state. And this like one, sort of once you take the, I feel like once you sort of take the um, restriction off of not being allowed to use cape, it opens the door to so many other things, like how you can actually use a pee balloon. Absolutely. Uh, P balloon Yoshi, like you can do, you know, these cool Yoshi um, ground pounds by activating Yoshi fly in a, in a very simple form. Yeah, there is a lot you can do with like items and stuff and other sprites after Cape. Uh, yeah, to answer a question in chat, um, as will become pretty obvious here, uh, this has the turnaround patch, which means that. Um, when you're flying with Y and you press X, you are guaranteed to face the other direction. Um, I don't have, like, the hatred for vanilla turnaround, which is effectively random, like, as some other people do. Um, 
like I've beaten all the other hacks in the in the cape block we have, which are vanilla turnaround hacks. Uh, but from a design point of view, um, I much prefer this. It's sort of more setup oriented as opposed to tech oriented, and I like setups more. Is Volpe's friend vanilla turnaround? I, for some reason, I yep. thought that had the turnaround patch too. Um, wow. No, nope. um, everything oh. Pogu has ever made has a vanilla cape. That's terrible. I mean, and, and great, but. Um, and so here uh, we see a homing volcano lotus. Uh, and this is basically a survival room. So you have to dodge the pollen for long enough um, so that the big boo hits those three shells like so. And then this is one that has a uh, homing pollen as well and pea balloon, but you actually have to um, hit the boo with the shells. And uh, for those keeping count, this is the sixth room of this level. <laughs> they're kind of long, but I like to think they're generous with the checkpoints. To quote LinkedIn X2, if you're going to make BS, make it short. Moving on to the third boss fight in this level. Um, any cultured Super Mario World ROM hack consumers uh, might recognize this since it's um, it bears similarity to one of the boss fights in Cooler Cruel Tubular, but that one takes place in the water. Um, so I, I thought it was interesting and I, and I decided to uh, make a cape version of it. So what you have to do is um, you have to keep flight on the vine um, and you have to keep these two shells in the air while the boo sort of does a, uh, a circle far and back. And then you have to grab this other one, still maintain flight, hit him with it. Um, and then the fight is timed in such a way that uh, after that, the third item that you have to hit the boo with falls down and you have to take flight and go and grab it. And then get the third hit here. And then this is just uh, a bit of a bullet heck with Yoshi wings. Somehow this feels like the most generous room. I don't know how... So, so Mr. Mighty Mouse is making this look really easy, uh, ultimately, but this one looks like... This somehow. one is all about getting a pattern. Like, once yeah. you kind of know the pattern to, uh, like... Because these uh, just shoot straight to you. And it's like, once you know the pattern, you can make it easier, but I keep messing it up. That is one of my favorite levels, for sure. And so here we've got one of Cape, um, which, like half of the of the level names in this hack, actually, uh, is a pun on a level name in Jump called 1F8. Um, and the uh, overarching gimmick of the Jump level is this vertical screen wrap that we see here. Um, and so I thought that level was extremely interesting, and I thought I would do a Cape take on it. So when, uh, when Mario and any other sprite um, touches the bottom or top of the screen, they wrap around to the other side. And there's some interesting looking and like interesting to execute things that you can do with that. Yeah, this extremely long dive bomb is weirdly satisfying to watch right at the beginning. Right. And it also adds some visibility to something that would other be, uh, otherwise be a lot more blind because basically you can see what's below you by looking to the right of you. Yeah. Yeah. 
And so here you basically um, have to keep up with these platforms since you need them to um, regain flight every now and then. Might have messed up using the flight meter there by uh, doing two dive bombs within 80 frames of each other. That was a first try for that room, and that that looked tough. <laughs> this all looks very flashy, um, and I feel like people think as a result of that that it's like super hard. Um, I would say this entire hack is pretty difficult, but not as hard as it looks. Um, I sort of went out of my way to make sure that you didn't need to, you know, do the cape equivalent of controlled jumps, like pretty much everything when you're taking off is either a tap to do the, the smallest takeoff or like just hold the, the button the entire way, stuff like that. Uh, so this is the first boss for this level, um, and the gimmick is you have to get sticky flies on these infinite um, hidden coin blocks. Shoutouts to dots are cool slash ISO freeze for programming those for me. Uh, and that's the only way to get these shells out of their jail cells and then guide them to um, hit this big boom. Yeah, Mighty Mess is doing so much of this so smoothly that you, sometimes you forget that he's doing this whole thing while flying. Like, I'm just watching shells fly around and, and guiding them to a big boo, and sometimes I forget that this whole time... He's in midair. There is a, certainly a point, like, when you've accumulated enough cape experience where, you know, like, altitude control and speed control just becomes second nature, and it's all the other stuff that you actually need to use any brain power to do. Yeah, so somebody may look at this and go, oh, the game only has eight exits. It's not that long. But each room or each level is like three to four sections and like four bosses. So they can definitely take up some time. Uh, so this entire level, uh, the gimmick is switches. So you need to hit switches in various ways to um, make progress. Um, and this is what happened after Link did taught me um, X animation so that I could actually change the states of blocks based on what switches were hit. <laughs> so shout outs to him again. So here these uh, these thwomps are, thwomps are actually helper thwomps. Uh, you need to ride them um, over the slava pit. Oh, no, I need to make it. That can be tough. If you're on a weird bounce, you have to like notice that right away and either like re-grab to fix the bounce or like bounce early. And a cape cancel at the very end. Hit the switches. Get in the pipe quick before the thwomps come at you. And the gimmick of this room um, is still switches, but more specifically, you have to um, work with timings for switch transitions that you don't control. So like you see shells being kicked about in the in the first half of this room, and you have to sort of fly in between them without um, getting hit. Nice first try pipe entry. Wow. That pipe entry is much harder than it looks, mainly that because it's not just an instant pull up. You have to like, wait a very like small minute amount of time that that pipe entry is complete nonsense i will be the first to admit it and that's why i put it there speaking of nonsense this next room oh yeah so here there's uh yeah there's just a phanta which you have to avoid <laughs> Yeah, no, that's fine. That's normal, actually. So I actually started with a with a Phanto sprite, which um, behaves uh, 
I can't say vanilla since this is an SMB2, uh, but which which is tuned to the defaults so that it um, it behaves similarly to a, a vanilla SMB2 Phantom Sprite in terms of like the speed and directional changes. Um, and I couldn't beat it after like hours, so I, I loosened it up until I was able to beat it basically. And then I made a version of level with two of them, which I beat, and I, I decided not to subject other people to. It's giving me, uh... It's giving me bad memories of the bad bad level design contest. That <laughs> one level that had two horrific phantom masks in it. I remember that one. That one was... Did not look fun to play. Yeah, I mean, it was bad level design contest. Yeah, to be fair, that was the point. Alright, so at this point, we will... The next level would normally be credits and what is any percent, but we will be turning around to do the hard boss. <laughs> Alright, so that's the level that gives credits, and uh, like we mentioned, Mouse is doubling back, and he's gonna go to the left to show you post-game, uh, so that we can end on credits. So as an homage to uh, Pogyo's k packs you fly through the chimney in the Yoshi house and there is this boss which requires uh, a certain piece of tech from you which is throwing an item in midair and keeping flight. Um, and so there's basically a window after you do a cape pump uh, where you can release and repress the button that you're using to fly and not lose flight as Mouse just did. Um, and you have to do this three times in a row while getting these throw blocks out of the wall um, through boot rings. And then oh. stay alive, and, and that's how you beat this boss. Is, it, is the window for it just very strange? Like you have to wait a certain amount of time and the window's narrow? Yeah, so the, um, the message box on the left uh, says what it is, and it's uh, nine frames after Mario starts his K-Pump animation. Nine frames after that, you have a seven frame window within which you can uh, release and repress the button. Okay. Uh, but pretty much everyone who's good at this um, just learns it by feel after getting yeah. it the first few times. I can't imagine that's the case, yeah. Yeah. Seven frames sounds pretty, I mean, compared to some of the awful stuff, that sounds more generous, but I imagine that you know, doing it while flying and while worrying about landing these blocks, it's probably miserable. <laughs> and I think one of the other big things is that it's not just seven frames to do the trick, it's that's a seven frame window. Right. And I think a lot of like, a lot of tricks, it's like having one frame to do it isn't too bad. No! And I, uh, that's, so that's if you start the window. So let's say you let you throw three frames too late. Now you only have three frames to re-grab it. Right. Gosh. Well, better the you than me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, there are there are a few people who played this who um, opted not to do this, and that's fine. That's why I made it optional. Dang it, dude. Can't get this third one. I had a few people questioning um, how many hits it was going to be, since you don't know offhand because you have infinite throw blocks. And uh, wouldn't it be terrible if you had to do like 10 of these in a row? Oh my god. I'm really surprised you didn't make it 10. Can confirm. I would not have needed <laughs> it if it was 10. Like now that um, you put that thought in my head, I'm like, I can't, I can't imagine a reason you would have chosen not to make it ten in a row. Um, some of these rooms, uh, like pushed my own capabilities past their limits. So some of this was like just the hardest thing that I could beat at the time, and this was one of them. Um, I, I wore myself out beating this the first time, and after I did it, I was like, all right, ship it. <laughs> And that's why it's an incentive. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, but there's obviously um. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, that's it. Oh, nice. You got it. Yeah, there's there's a lot of really cool stuff you can do with this tech. It's unfortunate that um most authors don't want to use it because it's kind of obscure and tight, and um a lot of players are annoyed by it because it's obscure and tight. Um, so this is called and then you die. This is the like the optional super difficult post game level. Um, and this has a few new pieces of tech. Um, one of them is sort of turning around uh, while doing uh, neutral bounces, uh, rather while neutral on the D-pad, so that you basically do a butt bop of of shells like this. Uh, and another one is dive storage, uh, which is basically you can store a dive uh, for use later. Um, and this is good for getting like sticky flies without any space to actually prepare the angle that you would need for uh, a conventional sticky fly. This is and a tough level. I'm kind of an expert on dive storage. I, uh, <laughs> I had to learn it one time for something. I don't want to talk about it. Uh, yeah, so actually the day Umar showed us the dive storage strat in Hyper 6, um, I started making this level around that gimmick because I thought it was it was a neat idea which has not been mandated in any ROM hacks yet. So Hyper 6 has given the world so many gifts, this level among them. Doesn't it feel bad to know that Hyper 6 has brought good things to the world in some ways? <laughs> There's definitely, like, a weird cognitive dissonance with that, yeah. I think we can all admit that oftentimes good things come out of bad things. Well, that's just a lesson about the world. Oh. <laughs> this ending is hard. Yes, yeah, so what, what Mouse wants to do there is um, spin the shell so that it hits the switch and opens up those switch blocks to the pipe. Um, and then when the shell comes down, you'll note that he has a key. So he wants to bop the shell so that it hits the, the thwomp to clear that obstacle out of the way. Um, yeah. And then, like that, and then use the key to, uh, to enter the pipe. Uh, and this, for my money, is the hardest boss in the game. Um, the idea is very simple, but it is a nightmare to execute. It is infuriating that this is as difficult as it is, because it doesn't feel like it should be difficult. Like, the last boss feels like it should be way harder. And, and then you just, like, keep dying. The previous one, right? Where you have to tap and re-grab at the right time? And this is just spinning. You're literally oh, just right, spinning yeah. bullets. Yeah. Okay. So, like, um, it should be easier. And it's just not. Spinning is definitely the intended solution. You can also try to, like, get in between them, which sometimes people do accidentally, but it's... It's much harder if you actually try to do that for all of them. To give you an idea of how much of a god gamer Umar is, who is less than $200 away from running 100 rooms of Kuso, Umar, on his blind playthrough of this game, first tried this boss. Wow. And now, we're going to wrap back around to the credits level. So now the overworld has been completed full circle. And uh, yeah, this is the final level. Um, called Disco Dance After Party with obviously a disco shell theme. Uh, named after the jump level Disco Dance Party, which hurt me immensely. Um, and so there was, there was some anguish that went into the development of, of this level. Pain creates some of the best art. Mm-hmm. Uh, this room I made just because I wanted to use this song in my hack, <laughs> and I had nowhere to put it. So this was the last room made for, for the hack for that explicit reason. That room is incredibly hard, by the way. Yeah, it's pretty hard. But you'd never know it from watching you play it. Uh, there have been many runs where I just got there and stonewalled for like 10 minutes. Yeah, but this wasn't one of them. Luckily. I'm just saying, you're making this look remarkably easy. Like, other people might be fooled into accidentally playing this hack, thinking this is going to go well for them. So this is this is not right, what's, what's happening to Mouse at the end here. 
Um, he has to slow down enough to not despawn this disco shell to the left of the screen because he needs it. Um, and what, what that does is allows these um, green magic Koopas to target him with their magic. And he's got to dodge it or he will die. And oh yeah, uh, it hasn't been explicitly mentioned, but the hack is purple because the cape is yellow. It's just got to be that way. And also, you may have noticed that the music for um, all the rooms in this level so far has been very chill. Um, and that's because you have to put calming music into your most nightmare levels so that people actually tolerate it. I just love the anticipation of seeing what those phantom masks were going to do, and it being somewhat anticlimactic. Um, those phantoms were just there to intimidate people originally, but um, like if you if you fly from the right, like if you go left and grab the key, like there's a good chance they'll kill you. Um, and I've seen them kill people, and it's 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 a bonus, honestly. If you put something there just to intimidate someone, but it kills them, like that's a pleasant surprise for the creator. Yeah, if you don't get rid of that key right away, they will get you, and very fast. These um, these invisible infinite coin blocks are really cool for setting up um, Sticky Fly in a really unique way. Yeah. Yeah, it lets you um, get as many Sticky Flies as you want off uh, a row of blocks, among other things. Yeah, without There's... having to like, line it up horizontally because you can go through it at any spot. Oh yeah, so uh, the Sticky Fly will activate um, if you're... Basically, if you activate the Bounce Sprite um, when you're going up, like, you will automatically get a Sticky Fly. Um, and Sticky Fly is normally considered, like, a pretty tight trick to have to do, like, a billion of... Um, as... Oh, which is the number we've had in this hack. Bounce blocks? Um... Yeah, so if you're going up anywhere inside the hitbox of a hidden coin block, um, and the bounce sprite activates, like, you will automatically be sticky flying underneath that, uh, oh, really coin block. Yeah, so this is oh. what's sort of called assisted sticky fly, um, and that makes it a lot easier, and that lets me get away with just making sticky fly required, like, all throughout the hack, because it's way easier, and I'm basically using it, uh, in place of, like, really basic mechanics, like, jump for a non-cape hack. Like, there are probably as many sticky flies in this hack as there are, like, jumps in just uh, a non-cape Kaizo hack. That's really cool. My only familiarity with sticky fly was its context in, like, a vanilla speedrun. And you don't yeah. do it against a bounce, a bounce block there, so I wasn't aware that it was actually that much easier against uh, blocks that bounce. Oh, yeah. Um, the, uh, the vanilla dome sticky fly setup, which is the one I assume you're talking about, um, it has, like, a nice visual cue. Um, yeah, it's not but, hard to set up, but you do have to hit it at a, a yeah, somewhat there's, narrow window. Yeah, there's a speed and angle of attack you need. Um, it's way more forgiving uh, with the assisted blocks. That's really cool. To the extent that it's not frustrating for people anymore. Hey, if I could just jump in here for a second, I just wanted to announce that we did pass the 5,000, so we are going to get our oh. bonus cape level, or cape hack. Is Very nice of Kukuso with Umario. Thanks, everybody. We are going to see the entirety of the Yellow Yasu Chan trilogy here tonight. And this is an event. Oh, this this room is like the bane of my existence. <laughs> I don't know what it is about this room. No. This might actually be the hardest boss for me in the game. This is objectively not the hardest boss, but for me... This one, this one is kind of tough. It requires some deceptively tricky cape control. So what Mouse has to do here is unlock these disco shells by um, hitting these turn blocks underneath them. Um, and then guide them onto the boo instead of into the lava. Um, and so this is a speed run, but there's a critical piece of lore that occurs here in this room. 
uh, what Yellow Yasu-chan tells you is that um, because you've made it as far as you have, you must be very determined and he will now help you. Um, and so you grow him with the wings into Yellow Yoshi and he helps you for the remainder of the game. All the heroes are coming together. It's like the Avengers. Exactly. So here you have to hit these switches to um, to carve out a path for these disco shells while the uh, the insta death homing bullet is after you. And here you have to guide the shots uh, for this magic Koopa to release the disco shells and then make sure that they hit the boo. And in this and final boss room, which is for people who aren't counting the uh, sixth boss phase in this level, uh, you have to guide Magikoopa's shots into these spin blocks and uh, the magic is custom. So it will always give you a Koopa, which you can swallow and then spit it, uh, back out at the boo. And so you have, you have this sort of ammo that you need the Magikoopa to, to turn into Koopas to use against this boo. And this one takes uh, six hits instead of three, because three was was not fun. It, it ended too quickly. It was too easy. And you may have seen this water, uh, this transparent water throughout the hack. Uh, and that's basically sprite-only water, so it has no effect on Mario. But when a sprite passes through it, it acts like water for the sprite. And its purpose uh, in the hack is to slow sprites down as they fall to make it easier for him. And, and that, that is... Technically be world record. That is the game, and that is time, and that wow. is the recorded world record. I think that's three minutes shaved off the world record. Very nice. Wow. GG. So our estimate was 45, and that was without the optional bosses. That's good. That's nice. I really... So, so I, I kind of was making jokes at the beginning, but it does seem like a lot of effort was put into making this hack um, a lot more friendly to people, so... You know, try it. Yeah, out. I think he, PK created an amazing hack. He really did. Um, this is probably one of the most heavily tested Super Mario World hacks of all time. <laughs> yeah, if, if you wait for the credits and see the tester section, there's like 15 people. There's like seven primary testers and like 15 like additional testers. There's a lot. <laughs> Well, what a great run, uh, getting a, a world record right here for everyone um, at the same time that we found out that enough money was raised to uh, have Umar show off another cool cape hack. Uh, is that happening after or before Volpe's friend? Uh, it's right afterwards. Okay. Um, GG on the record, Mouse. I just want you to know that the donation messages for the last while have just kind of been going crazy for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. It's been really cool to see. Yeah, I'm just um, glad we hit the goals. Absolutely. Uh, I'm going to move over to reading some of those over in after. Just wanted to make sure any of you had anything else you wanted to say about Let's Give Up first. Any other shout outs or anything you want to do? Uh, no, just shout out to BK for making an absolutely amazing game. There's not there's not a lot of cape hacks that people who aren't like already really good at cape can start. So I think it's kind of amazing that this came out and really does fill that void while being entertaining to watch. It just a, you did a great job. Thank you. Um, I'm really happy that people have derived like a lot of enjoyment out of playing and running this. Neat hack. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go back to being the restreamer. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy the rest of the marathon. Thanks for the awesome run and the great commentary. It was, uh, that was really a joy to watch. <laughs>